Now the absorption spectrum of, uh, of light from a star or a galaxy is very useful to astronomers and this diagram will show us how those absorption spectra are used. So let's say we're looking at a star, a faraway star, and stars, given their nuclear fusion, they are so hot they are radiating all of the colors of light. So we can think of stars as a source of white light. If we put the star's light through a prism, we're going to see all the colors of the rainbow, the continuous spectrum. But oftentimes there's stuff in between the star that we're looking at and our eyes. And so now we'll be looking at this diagram here, this portion of the diagram here. Uh, as we collect the star's light, if it passed through any kind of other stuff, could be gas or dust here, well then the atoms that make up that cloud are going to be absorbing certain colors of the white light. And we will then see th that absorption as dark lines. It's the missing light that was absorbed by the atoms in this cloud. So let's think about, let's imagine it was hydrogen for example. Uh, if this cloud were hydrogen, then all the white light's going to go through this cloud, but some of the colors will be absorbed. And we saw, let's pretend uh, it was uh, this atom here, so we'll say that the red will be absorbed and the blue will be absorbed, but not the yellow. Well, so we can imagine then the yellow light from the star is going to go right on through. It doesn't get a, get absorbed, and here we then see all the yellow colors uh, uh, on our spectra here because none of the yellow got absorbed by the atoms here. But some of the red light is going to be absorbed, and so we see a line in the red region of the rainbow here. And so that dark line means that the atoms here have subtracted out. They've absorbed some of that light, so we see less of that uh, red light at that particular wavelength. Likewise, some of the blue light got absorbed. So maybe here's the blue band here. So if this pattern of uh, dark bands here, the absorption lines, if it matches a certain element, then we infer that the cloud is made of that element. Element. So this might be the pattern that we see for hydrogen, so we infer that the cloud is made of hydrogen. Now let's remember though that when the gas here is absorbing certain colors, in time those atoms are going to re-radiate that same color in all directions. If we happen to be over here collecting the light from the cloud of gas here, then we would see the emission spectra for those atoms in the cloud. But more often, uh, astronomers are dealing with absorption spectra. But the useful thing is, it doesn't matter if you're looking at dark bands in a certain pattern or the bands of light in a certain pattern, the two are the same. So if this cloud of gas is hydrogen, then the dark bands are going to be in the same pattern as the emission spectra for hydrogen. And since uh, scientists already know the emission spectra for all the different kinds of elements, they simply have to just figure out what, what elements are present by looking at the pattern of absorption lines in the light collected from light sources in the universe. So absorption spectroscopy can help astronomers identify the composition of things in the universe from clouds of gas to stars to entire galax uh, galaxies. Uh, it can also be used to determine the relative motion of things in the universe as we'll see. Now the absorption spectra can also be used to determine uh, an object's motion. First let's recap uh, an absorption spectra. Here's the Sun. The Sun is generating a continuous spectrum. It's so hot all the colors of light are being produced. But as the light leaves the Sun, it has to pass through a, a, the Sun's atmosphere, which is at a cooler temperature. And so whatever this atmosphere is made of is going to be absorbing some of the light produced by the Sun's interior. And the atmosphere of the Sun is likely to be made up of lots of similar things as the, the core of the Sun itself. So this is a way that scientists can uh, figure out what stars are made of. Well here comes the light. All the colors of light are going to pass through the Sun's atmosphere. And if we were to measure the light out here in space, we would see the continuous spectrum with dark lines. These would be the absorption lines from the Sun's atmosphere. So we could figure out what the Sun is composed of by looking at these the pattern of the absorption lines. But of course we uh, don't have many instruments up in space, although uh, there are 
uh, NASA has put up different telescopes and spectrometers in space. But if we're down on Earth, then the light has to go through the Earth's atmosphere, and the atmosphere will also absorb some of the colors. So there will be more lines in the absorption spectra if we're making the observation from Earth. But the point is, stars are producing all the colors, and then anything in between that can absorb those colors, we can sort of identify what it is that's in between by the pattern of the dark lines, the pattern of absorption lines. Well, this can be applied to galaxies too. After all, what is a galaxy? Just a collection of stars and gas and dust. So for the Andromeda galaxy that's two and a half million miles away, the light from the Andromeda galaxy is light coming from stars. Well, the light has to pass through the atmospheres of stars and it likely passes through lots of interstellar gas and dust. So the light coming from the Andromeda galaxy is filled with information there will be absorption lines in that light and those absorption lines can be used to determine the motion of the galaxy not just its composition and this then was the famous discovery by Edmund Hubble so he was uh, measuring the light he was using spectroscopy so you take the light from a galaxy and you put it through the prism and you separate it out into colors and then you look at the pattern of the absorption lines and he made a fundamental discovery about our universe so here let's take a look here's a, a reference maybe the absorption lines for the Sun of course there are many uh, absorption lines that are not shown here but let's focus on this pattern here so here we see absorption lines from the Sun now what Hubble did was, was then he started to get the absorption spectra from different galaxies. So let's imagine here's our universe today. Here's us. Here's Hubble on Earth here. And let's say he's measuring the light from two different galaxies, Galaxy A, Galaxy B. What he noticed was that when he spread the light from Galaxy A and looked at the absorption lines, the absorption lines were shifted. It's not that the, the, just the light was shifted it's the absorption lines were shifted that's the thing that allowed Hubble to to tell that the object was red shifted what gets red shifted are the absorption lines yes all the light is being stretched if the object is moving away but we can determine that we can detect that by the movement here of the absorption lines the absorption lines are shifted to the red end of the spectrum that indicated motion away from Hubble and when he looked at galaxies that were farther, he found a larger redshift. So again, here's the reference, the absorption lines from the sun. And galaxy B had a much larger redshift. So the absorption lines were shifted uh, to a greater degree towards the red end of the spectrum. Now, why would it be that the farther galaxies are traveling faster than closer galaxies? That led to the idea of an expanding universe. And if the universe is expanding now, then at some time in the past, there must have been some Big Bang. So this is one of the fundamental pillars of the Big Bang Theory, Hubble, Hubble's observation that the galaxies are moving away from us, farther galaxies are moving faster, as would be explained by the expansion of space since the beginning of time.